five minutes. Your awareness may be powerful enough to control your instincts. Your instinct will be to remove your hand from the box. It's your girl Mish, and welcome to another episode of the Love Mish Podcast. another episode of love niche podcast on today's episode we are going to be talking about pregnant ish it is something that i have dealt with for a very long time um i usually just keep everything bottled up to myself and then when i overflow i have my family and friends there for me but i always have felt alone and it just seems like the issue just kept growing and growing and growing over the years and then the bubble finally just burst and I just was like blah um you know I disconnected from social media like I just like disappeared from everybody it's just like one thing after another and I just I just wanted to like not deal and slowly but surely, let me tell you how the universe is. I'll be getting like little emails and little YouTube things will be coming up and little this and little that and they all have the same theme. And I'm like, God, are you trying to show me something? And it's like the answers are usually always there. But the question is, are you ready to accept the answer? Are you ready to do the work? You know, are you ready to give it the time that it's going to take? And if your answer is anything other than yes, then you're going to continue to wallow until you reach that yes. So I finally have reached a place of yes. <laughs> like when you get sick of that, you get sick of that. And things are starting to turn around and I'm just like so happy and thankful and like, oh, I know this isn't going to be it. There's always going to be stuff in life that you have to go through. But it's a difference between going through it the first time and going through it again. Like when you first get a flat tire, let's say you're driving, and pop, your tire break, and it's like, you lose control of your steering wheel. It's so scary. And you're like, what the fuck? You know, you know, how do I change this tire? Who do I call? Like, you're just freaking the fuck out. But the second time it happens, you're like, oh, no, low pressure. Let me go put some air in the tires or, all right, the tire blew. I, I know how to do this. Let me put on my hazardous lights, open my trunk, change this tire. You know, you, you kind of know what to expect. So it's always always seems easier um, after you've gone through something. But for me, just until I get through it, it's just like, Ugh. but once I'm out of it, it's like, okay, you know. You didn't die. You know, this is what's going to happen. And it's what you can expect. And different things are going to give you different emotions. But ultimately, the answers are really the same. It's like finding the answers, doing the work, and getting the result, to be honest. Um, But before we go, you know, any further into the podcast, um, did I delete the other one? Let me see. I think I deleted it. hey loves how have you been doing um so to yesterday actually or my brother married my sister-in-law and her mom gave me some eggplants I've never had eggplants in my life she gave me three and I tried them, you know, a few different ways now. So who, what would she be? My mother-in-law? Would she be my mother-in-law too? Even though my brother married her? Blind mother, blind moment. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. She'd be my mother in law too. Okay. <laughs> uh, forgive me. The first time I looked at a whole bunch of YouTubes, I'm like, okay, how do you how do you make this? And I didn't peel it. I left the skin on the first time. I cut it up and I fried it in some virgin olive oil. And I liked it, but I had too much grease, so it was a little greasy. The second time I saw somebody somebody else used to was like, you need to soak it in salt salt water. So I soaked it in salt water and it had a little bit more flavor. And that time, instead of putting it in grease, I put it in the air fryer. It wasn't as crunchy because it wasn't fried in the grease. So it was more of a dry. But I could still eat it. And it, and it gives me like a meaty feel. Like I, I haven't had chicken in, in over five years, coming up on six. And um, it's just the closest thing. It's not really a fruit or a vegetable. It's not a potato or a carrot, grape or anything. The closest thing I can give it would be like jackfruit would be like meat to me. Um, especially when you fry it and stuff. So this third time, I saw this Italian man. He done dipped it in flour, breadcrumbs, and fried it and put it in lasagna. I said, okay. I got some lasagna noodles, some lasagna pasta sauce, some mushrooms. I was like, let's do this. Um, so I boiled the noodles. I put, a, and I saw Tabitha too. She made vegan lasagna, but she did more of spinach and more onions and stuff hers was more vegetables she didn't have eggplant like me um and those eggplant pieces were very very thick i put them in flour i fried them they were very thick and they would look like pork chops because eggplant is really big i didn't know how big eggplant was now as i think back to all these uh sexual jokes what <laughs> that eggplant is huge um it's like i don't know i don't get the jokes anymore that eggplant is humongous but um, it's nothing like a banana. Try a bunch, a bunch of bananas together. Like, that's the size of a freaking eggplant. And who is doing what with that? Okay. So, um, I fried them up. They look like little pork chops. Uh, because I didn't dip it in sea salt this time, I had to add more seasoning. So, the thing about eggplant, it reminds me of avocado. It doesn't really have any taste. So, you have to give it taste. So, um. I'm, I'm learning how to get my seasons down packed. So when it get on the plate, I don't have to add anything else. But that's okay. I'm going to get there. So I put my noodles. I put my sauce down. I put my noodles down. I put my eggplants in there. Um, I put some sauce on top. I put the noodles again. I put sauce on top. No, I put the noodles again. I did mushrooms. And then I put my sauce on top because I was running out of sauce. And then I put a lot of seasons on the top. And nutritional yeast is like cheese for me. So nutritional yeast. Man, when I tell you I had two pieces yesterday, I had two pieces today. Now, I'm eating a whole pan by myself. Um, I don't think my parents, they'll, they'll try little things here and there, but they ain't want to try that, which is fine. You know, I, I do offer. And I have two more pieces that I'll be eating tomorrow. But that was, like, so good. And I'm so excited. Like, I really kind of, like, sat down and I was like girl you have so many ideas and so much that you want to do but like you just be taking your time doing it like tomorrow is not promised if you were to die tomorrow look at all of this stuff that you didn't do so I'm really going to be intentional about putting stuff out this year it's never been about money for me I find a lot of stuff for free so how dare I turn around and charge like a lot of stuff I find is free um and everybody's in a different situation. Some people got families, kids to feed and stuff like that. Like, I get it. I get it. Make that money. The Lord's going to help that money come. But I'm in a position where I do have a job that's able to pay my bills. And so they say, find something that makes money. Have that. Find something that keeps you healthy. I go on walks. I do my yoga. Um, you know, stretching. Not really the... I can't do a headstand or any of that stuff, but I, I focus more on the stress stretching and mindfulness of it and find something that makes you happy. My podcast makes me happy, so I have no problems with doing it for free. Like, I'm going to learn and research anyway, and I'm going to share it with a friend and just push and record and sharing it with the world is, is like the same thing to me, except for I'm not worrying out my friends or I'm not telling them stuff that they don't want to hear because you can ask my family and friends the moment I read something. 
like 5G is causing cancer, all the sixes in the world. I'm like sending it to them. Like, y'all need to read this. We need to make some changes. Ah, Like, that's my mind. And they're, they're probably like, okay, here she go. But what I've learned through experience is when I change my diet, all right, everybody laugh. Year one, year two, everybody started watching. Year three, oh, I'm making this. I'm making that. You want to try? You know, you start to see them change. Year four, year five, you're coming up on year six. It's like people watch you, and, and they do what you do after watching you. They might not do anything what you're telling them, but just live, just be, just do, just be that example, and they'll come around on their time. But again, it's just hard for me because it's, everything is like life and death to me, and I really want you to live, but there's free will, and you have to give people that space to make those choices and even if it if, even if it ends up taking them out that was their choice to make and I, I'm pretty sure I have a control issue yeah because <laughs> it's like I love you I don't need you to make do certain things because I love you and if I didn't love you I wouldn't care if you ate a big burger you know it had nothing to do with me so yeah my circle just has it hard because of that love that I have for them but Man, that lasagna was so good. So I can't wait to eat that tomorrow. So that was a little something with me. Um, and then I'm going to continue with how have you been doing? That's good. As long as you're growing and evolving and spreading love, you're on the right path. And I hope you see the fruits of your labor. So I wanted to start this podcast out with... Yo... Y'all won't even believe this. So, I've been, this is my third year doing podcasts. Yay! Happy three year anniversary to me. Um, I remember when IRS went on furlough and I had all these business ideas that I wanted to do. And the only one that I've stuck with so far has been the podcast. Some of the others, they're going to take financial, you know, backing. I don't know, sugar daddy or nothing like that. So, it's like, okay. Um, the better my credit get, the better my business credit will get, the more, you know, funding and, and loans and credits will come my way. And then I can revisit those. And my mom mentioned something. She was like, you always will have established 2019. So even if it takes, you know, whatever amount of years for your business to come, you still will have that established in 2019. So I still have my business babies. It's just this is the one that I'm able to do, you know, free of cost. So this is the one that's been going the most um but I sent my podcast to someone that I really look up to and admire and um I got an email back like the first thing this morning I got a freaking email back and it's so crazy because I was saying like God if I didn't have to work right now if all my bills was taken care of I would still read and learn and research and do this podcast I'm already doing it for free it will continue to be that way and it was just so crazy that that was my first email because my job is just becoming so stressful. I'm like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay off this car first and I'm going to look into other avenues because if I can tell someone in my face, you're not going to talk to me like that and be disrespectful, you need to leave or I will leave. But because I'm getting a check, I have to sit here and take it. Like abuse is abuse. Who said that it was okay to be abused if you're getting a paycheck? No, that's not what I want to do. I'm already dealing with mental things, emotional things, you know, health. And this really, you know, it isn't good for me. Um, It isn't good for anything. So, like, I'm like I'm at that point where, okay, I'm really going to, you know, try to put thousands on these car payments and hurry up and get it out of the way. So that I can, you know, find another job and that will be one less of a bill. And so... The lady, she contacts me. She's like, hey, I heard your podcast, Sad. I really think you'll be a good fit. Download your documents, sign the agreement, and we're good to go. And I'm just like, oh, my God. And I really sent the most basic email ever. Like, I, I saw the advertisement like, hey, um, if you, you know, doing, you know, if you have movies or podcasts or music or whatever, and you think we'll be a good fit, send us an email. We'll see if, 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 if you're a good fit. That was like the advertisement. And I was just like, hey, um, here's the link to my podcast. Check it out. If you think I'd be a good fit, just reach back out to me. Boom. Just very, very basic and simple. 
And I just was not, y'all was not even expecting to get a response back. I'm thinking, like, because when I look at the app, I'm seeing scientists and, like, all these, you know, famous people. And I'm like, they would want my little old podcast on there. And I told that to my mom. And she said, stop saying that. Stop littling yourself. Um, and I'm like, okay. So I really have to stop watching my words. But I'm just going to look over the contract and make sure that I can still post to anchor i'm trying to do soundcloud um because i have like the podcast world down pack but they would help me with the video world you know the streaming world and and getting people that may not have heard of me because i used to post on social media but i'm not on social media anymore so the only way you're going to hear it is if you've been a fan of the podcast and i have a youtube link to it where i do like 10 second clips and some people have found me through there So I really lost the audience. I was looking back through my podcast and on one podcast, I had like 300 listens and the majority of them was like 50 and now I'm down to like 15. But still, the the point of the whole podcast was if one person would listen, you know, I've done my job. And you know what came to me? I was so money, 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 money hungry. And then it all of a sudden hit me. Like when you see God, is he going to be like, good job. You had a million dollars in the bank. Uh, No. He going to be like, did you learn? Did you grow? Did you heal yourself? Did you help others? How, how many of my children did you help? Okay. How much love did you spread? Okay. And I really had to check myself like, oh my God, they really have us chasing the wrong thing. Like this life is really not about money. Of course you need money to live. But that's not the point of it. Like it's, 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 it's self first and then reach back and help with someone else. Each one, teach one. And, um... I feel like with this podcast, I'm able to do that. I'm I'm reading all day. A person may not want to read this stuff. You know, I'm doing it. I'm able to share it. Um, someone before me read it and shared it. You see, it just it just keeps going. So as long as everything works out, I'm going to just ask that question. Hey, I still post to Anchor and, um, you know, YouTube and SoundCloud. You know, if signing this paperwork, going to take all of that away. You know, I'm not sure. You know, just ask a few more questions and then, you know, Hey, we'll see where it goes from there. But that was just amazing news. I told my mom and my dad this morning. And they're like, oh my gosh. Like, congrats. I told my friends and everybody. And they were all excited. So we'll see where that goes. I will definitely keep you guys posted. Um, Another thing I did. I finally completed baby book number two. um, And it's called... I am more than one in four lessons from infertility. I will have the link for the ebook below. And I also made some fertility digital oracle card inspirations. For fertility digital inspiration cards. I wanted to stay away from Oracle because like my mom, if she hears Oracle, she's not gonna click on it because you know, that's just where she is in life. And I wanna attract as many people to it as I can without scaring them with the Oracle word. So I switched it to Fertility Digital Inspiration Cards. And basically, when you click on it, it gives you an inspiration for that day. Um, And so I'm super, super excited about that. Both of them are free. Um, I am going to reach out to my publicist because I I don't want to say I'm an author because it's not just me from beginning to end every sentence. But it's like, girl, this is what I went through. This is what I learned. This was the podcast link, da, 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 da. Like, when I get a chance, I really want a digital book. Like, I want you to hear my voice. I want you to see, you know, little memes and pictures and clip art and sound effects in the background. Maybe music. Like, I want it to be, like, a whole experience. I heard, I read a book like that. Like, it was literally a whole experience. I'm like, this is a movie. It sounded like a movie through her audio book. And I thought it was amazing. Um, Where was I going with that? Uh, ebook is free. Oh, I am going to reach out to my publishers. You have to pay her to edit it, which is fine. And then I'm pretty sure they're going to make, make me want me to make some changes because unless you get permission from people, I don't think you can republish. Um, If they will allow me to do it for free, I can because, again, that's just where my heart is. But if I have to change it, whether it's free or not, I'm willing to do that as well. And I will ask them to guide me. Uh, P.S. If you're writing a book and you're looking for a publisher to help you out, I recommend Dope Publishing. That's D.O.P.E. Publishing. And it's with Mike Reed. 
I love all of his books. He's been, you know, helping us sisters for years. Just Mike. Um, I remember I got his bracelet and I lost it. Bought the book, had the shirt. Like, um, his slogan was no more boyfriends. And that's exactly how I feel. Like, I have no time <laughs> to be dating you forever, sir. Like, I spent 10 years of my life doing that. And I will never do that again. Um, especially when we know that a guy knows what he wants to do with you within the first five minutes. So, I have no time to waste, period. Um, my eggs are screaming family. My ring finger is screaming marriage. And... My heart is screaming soulmate. So <laughs> if none of that resonates with you, goodbye. <laughs> um, but yeah, check him out. He's he's great. That's who's going to be uh, helping me with book one and two. So I'm excited to complete those two officially this year. But I'm still going to send it out for free. And then I'll be like, you know, the second edition will be on Amazon or whatever. Um. And I'm going to do, I may come back and do another podcast on the ebook. I'm not sure. Or I may just put up YouTube. I haven't decided which one I'm going to do just yet. So that um, was my podcast links. Now I want to recommend a local business, Mommy and Me Massage Therapy LLC. Um, you can reach her. Uh, you can look her up on Facebook, Mommy and Me Massage Therapy you can call her at 678-599-6814 and you can email her at mommy and me massage therapy LLC at gmail.com. Now, when I had a tubal pregnancy, my left, the baby was stuck in my left tube. They couldn't save the baby and because of the damage, they had to take the tube and the baby. So I only had my right tube and there was scar tissue. Um... So I was going to her to get a massage. Now, there are so many testimonies of people opening their tubes. So I'm not even really worried about it. I think I'm more, I think I have more anxiety that something that I know I was born for to be the most amazing mom ever, the most great wife ever, business owner, like a lot of stuff that I know is in me just hasn't happened yet. I'm getting older and I think I'm so impatient. It's just my sister said when you think about the future it's anxiety so it has to be anxiety related the past is fine like I'll, I'll cry it out I'll move on I'm good but this whole future thing is like oh it's driving me crazy because like I'm in the now so I just have to remind myself like this is where you are now you know you'll get there it's okay um and I'm going to sign up for therapy to kind of help with that because you know I ha oh, I, I just don't know how to deal with that but I recommend Mommy and Me Massage Therapy because she was massaging my right fallopian tool. And, like, if you look up Wern Technique Therapy, they charge $8,000, okay? Who? I'm still, you know, worried about these student loans. I'm sitting on the house right now. Who has $8,000? Even though that's cheaper than IVF for the baby, but damn. So her prices are very, very reasonable, um, I stopped going because I got, you know, into a bind, you know, I wasn't sure if my job was going to keep me COVID and stuff. And, you know, I, then I, then I got depressed. And I didn't want to go anywhere or do anything. And I still haven't gone out. So I don't think I'm going to go out until I have a couple of therapy sessions, um, to pinpoint like what it really is and to get some help with that. But and then I heard, like, there's spike proteins with the COVID shot and it's fucking with infertility. I'm like, bitch, I'm already, <laughs> I'm already dealing with infertility shit. I don't need nothing else I'm fucking up the slight chance that I do have. So I just didn't want to go around with anybody. I didn't want to have to ask, you got the shot, all right? I didn't want to make nobody feel uncomfortable. Like, I'm not going to be around you. So the best thing that I could do is just stay by myself. Um, I've learned that there's different things that I could do to protect myself from the spike proteins um but i've gotten sick like three times this year and we it's, it's only been like a month I'm, well i'll say this sick in december once and twice in january and i and it seems like when i go out i get sick so i did like a yoga thing i got sick um i went to my sister's house house for thanksgiving i got sick i got sick again out of nowhere i was like okay what so i'm just trying to pinpoint that because i don't like the whole spitting up coughing and stuff 
So I made, I did make the ginger and turmeric, and I've been taking that shot every day. And I'm okay so far. Knock on wood. But I still don't want to just jump out there and then end up sick again. Like, it's okay to be sick, but back to back to back, you're like, what the fuck? It's, it's going to start to drive me insane. 11 11. So I recommend her. Shout out to her. Um, she. I really connected with her because she knows what it's like to have a loss. Um, and she was just so kind and she's into the spiritual world. She gave me some crystals. She made waist beads for me. Oh, my God. She made um, a fertility waist bead for me that's pink, blue, and white. And she put three crystals in the middle. They're also my birthstone, but she didn't even know I lost three babies. And that was just so amazing. I remember I got waist beads for everybody in my family. So, yeah, shout out to her. Um, Check out my new YouTube. This is going to be my video reco. Reco means recommendation, okay? So, you know, if you know me, if you have a name and I like you, I give you a nickname. That's just kind of how I do. So, I'm not going to be saying recommendation. I'm just going to say reco. So, video reco for this podcast would be the Mommy and Me YouTube playlist. That's my new YouTube. Right now, I just have, if you click on playlist, I have so many things that you can look and research, sis. We are going to be okay. It's just the anxiety that we have to control. That's it, girl. That is it. And I think that plays a major part in it as well. Um, But I have a logo. Today, I made a logo. I got my name. Like, I'm just so excited to go on that journey. Um, I'm going to start doing my podcast with video like everything is just like i don't know it's just it's an it's an it's a different phase for me so check that out check out my playlist and share it you know with someone that you know may be dealing with infertility it's really something that we won't just talk about in public and it's not a shame thing and it's not like not like we won't ever have kids in the future but it's like you don't relate the book that's like being the only single per- person at a marriage retreat or um, going to church and you're a complete atheist. It just be, it just kind of feels like you're out of the loop and no one understands. So when you find people that have been through what you are, you're just like, ah, oh. it's almost like a fresher back I'm like, oh, you've cried too. You, you, you know, you needed therapy too. Oh, you lost kids too. Oh, you're trying too. Oh, you, you know, it's like, yes, like a, you find, you like, it's like you found your tribe. And I felt like that with my spirituality, like no one else was getting crystals. No one else was doing this. Da-da. I just had my two sisters and my best friend. That's it. But I'm like, if we're growing, like, why are everybody else not growing? So my tribe went from, like, 20 people to, like, it just got small and in a very fast amount of time. And it was just like, whoa. And so the conversations are going to be different. You know, I don't talk about the same stuff anymore, you know. I'm talking about chakras and stuff, and you might not even know what they are. You know, it's just it's just a different place. So then I hit another bump in the road, like, okay. You know, somebody else is pregnant. Somebody else's kids is about to graduate. Somebody else's kids is driving now. And it's just like, I don't relate. It just feels so out of place. Um, So, yeah, share that with somebody. Uh, And then a podcast, Rico, I have is Pregnant-ish. And what what I mean by universe be talking to me, this podcast came out of nowhere. Like, I'll be reading a blog and it'll be like, hey, check that, check out this podcast. And this, there's so many people. I think I felt alone. Like, I'm the only one in the world that is having problems. Like, people sneeze and they're pregnant. Or they might have a one-night stand with somebody and pregnant. Or they might not even want kids and pregnant. It's just like, Lord, do you <laughs> are you mixing me up with other people? Because they didn't want a child and they're very much pregnant. And I've always wanted one and nothing. So... It's just, it's like I said, it just feels nice to find people that can relate, to know that you're not alone. And also those testimonies, like, it took me a month. It took me a couple of months. It took me a week. It took me um, a couple of weeks. It took me a year. It took me seven years. Just knowing that, bitch, this tunnel ends because it almost seems like a bottomless pit, to be honest. Um, so check out that podcast, Pregnant-ish. And then the Reiki Healing Prayer Focus that I have for this particular podcast would be Mommies and Waiting. 
because there's so many women all over the world that are going through different situations. It's not just infertility is one thing. It could be your uterus. It could be your eggs. It could be your tubes. You know, it could be the egg not sticking. It, I mean, it's just, it's just so many things. And then there's adoption and then there's in vitro. And then like, it's not really just one thing. And I only can relate to miscarriage personally, tubal pregnancy and, um, block tubes. Those are the three ones that I can, uh, relate to. And I'm scared of needles. So I don't know if IVF will ever be a thing for me. Um, my sisters have said once upon a time that they would carry the baby for me. I'm not sure if that offer still stands because their kids are good and grown now. I know my mom wouldn't have, if she could, so I don't know. She, um, so I know a baby is in my future, but just thinking about it and just being surrounded by it and just not really dealing with it just puts me in bad places on top of I have so much grief there's different griefs that I have um I'm not getting the shot so I could lose my job and I've been here for five years and I've applied for the management program and now with me not getting the shot they won't want me to test to go in the building I'm not putting it up my nose I put it up my nose twice and I'm mad at myself that I had to do that and I'm just not putting myself in situations that I don't want to be in anymore um, those tests are faulty. There's chemicals in them. You know, they're messing up your penile gland. I mean, the list goes on. So I'm just not doing it anymore. So that means I wouldn't be able to go help in the training room. Thank God I'm telework. So I don't have to worry about it now. But that would mean that I wouldn't be able to go to work because I wouldn't want to test. And being so close to getting a home where you take the job away, you know, that, that, that puts you back two years because now you have to find another job to be on that job for two years to qualify for the home loan and it's just like god it was just like one thing after fucking another and if i had a button i could literally like blow the whole world up like my anger is really bad um so i just had to take a moment to say like fuck everything and just all i can do is breathe like i was in a moment of I'm breathing. Just leave me the fuck alone. If I ain't doing nothing else right, I'm breathing. So let's just take it one breath at a time. Like, that's literally where I've been. Just, bitch, one breath at a time. I can't even ask how you're doing because the fuck. Don't even ask how I'm doing because my answer will be, I have a therapist. That's a heavy question for me. I have a therapist that's, you know, on the case. So, prayers for all the mommies in waiting because, oh my gosh, you guys are going to hear in a moment. You have no idea, but you are about to find out, honey. Yes, you are. Okay, and the last thing I wanted to say is I'm so proud of myself. Um, I went to goodtherapy.org and I found a therapist that's in my area. She's a woman, number one. I wanted a woman. Um, she is African American, number two, and that's what I wanted. And three, she's been in the business over 17 years. So she has the experience. Um, you know, she helps with everything. Couples, children, adults, families, um, stress in the workplace, depression, behavioral issues, marital issues, parental, premarital issues, addiction, anger management, anxiety, bipolar, can't, career counseling, child or adolescence, chronic impulsory, codependency, coping skills, divorce, domestic abuse, dual diagnosis, emotional disturbance, family conflict, grief, infertility, ding, 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 uh, grief and infertility, life transitions, obsessive compulsive OCD, parenting, peer relationships, pregnancy, prenatal, postpartum, relationship issues, school issues, self-esteem, self-harming, spirituality, suicidal, trauma, PTSD, women's issues, um, she treats addictions, aging, anger, anxiety, behavior, bipolar, bullying, caregiver, chronic illness, codependency, depression, drug and alcohol, parenting, self-esteem, social anxiety, stress, women issues. So I'm like, Lord, I sent her an email. I'm just waiting for her to get back to me and I will got, I will update you guys on that. Um, like this has been the year of like, I've never heard people promote therapy so much in my life. Um. My parents are getting good results from therapy. My my little sister has always advocated for therapy. The first therapy lady I went to, she was just too hard. No. So we're going to try this again. And hopefully I can get the... 
And I realized what it was, too. I used to tell everybody, all my heart and soul, and they would be my therapist, give me the best advice they could, but they really don't have the knowledge and experience to kind of help me. So I would just literally just dump it all out, and then they would give me words of encouragement, and we would move on. But I started keeping everything to myself because people got other shit to worry about. Um, And then sometimes it would be repeated shit. You know, I'm telling you about this guy over and over again, you know, I don't want to lose you because I keep going back or it may seem stupid to you or whatever. Just you just start to keep stuff to yourself and I'm not dumping anymore. So everything's literally piling up, which led to what I'm dealing with now. So I'm going to go to someone who's trained to help me unpack all of the stuff that I'm going through and to give me the um, extra support that I need in life. Which, hey, we're all here for each other anyway. So we all have that one skill that we learn or expertise that we just share it with the world. And if we all share that one thing, we can all help each other in all the different areas of life. So I'm excited about that. So I do recommend therapy. I'm so excited to hear back from her. And I found her through goodtherapy.org. You just put in your zip code and they will show you some selections. and You kind of go from there. So what we're going to do is going to be part one and part two. And I'm going to let you guys hear what it's like in the world of infertility. So I have some amazing women that are going to be speaking. Um, I've listed their names so you can find them on YouTube. But you're going to hear the whole thing. They aren't long. And then in part two, because it's not the end of the world, we're going to talk about how people overcome. So these first two parts are just telling you what it's like to be in the world so it may seem down and out but that's okay just stay with me part two women do overcome there's different healing remedies and xyz so and it's not the end of the world it is okay um but for me in particular infertility is not something i'm worried about i do know there's enzymes you can take um there's yoni pearls you can take there's yoni steam that you can do like the tubes will be unblocked that's not the problem The problem for me is I really thought that I would be married with kids probably at 20. And with me being 34, you know, it's just, it's taking so long to get here. And I'm so impatient. It's just, ugh, that's one thing. But another is, as I changed, my taste in men is changing too. So who I could have married maybe a couple months ago or even years I may not even be interested in anymore. So now I'm not only waiting for a child, now I'm waiting for a possible mate too. And I'm talking about, I don't eat meat. You know, do I really want to be with someone that eat meats? That means I'm going to have to cook meat, which means we're probably going to have to have an argument about the kids eating meat. So it's like, okay, do I want to deal with that? Or do I just find someone that's vegan already? Um... So, yeah, just like growing and really having these hard questions with myself and sticking to them and not settling. Like, I just refuse to settle. I owe it to myself and my kids to give them the best possible partner in life. And a lot of people aren't doing the work in life. And their kids are suffering because of it. Like, your kids real deal grow up and be like, damn, mom, dad, y'all fucked up. I don't have that for my parents like yeah they were growing and they needed you know help as far as you know they started out so young so they literally was was growing and learning at the same time raising kids um but they did a phenomenal job in fact today I I wrote them both amazing things just like reflecting at 34 I'm like thank you for this thank you for that because of different phases in my life I can appreciate them for doing different things and Oh, that's another thing, too. I just know when I start a family, I'm just going to see things so much differently. And I'm going to be able to thank them so much more. And my dad always says, like, his mom would tell him, when you have kids, you'll see. And that's one of those things, like, you can tell people all day, this is what it's like, yada, yada, yada. But to be honest, you have to go through stuff to know. Like, I can look at a million pregnancy videos. I can read a million books. But until I push a baby out, I have no fucking idea what that's like. You know what I mean? So motherhood is the same way. I could be the best godmom. I could be the best auntie. I can love all the kids in the world. 
but it's not the same as having your own kids, you know? So hopefully my therapist can kind of help me unpack that. But check out these two amazing women as they tell you, like, what the fuck it's like in this world. And see for a moment, just a moment, if you'd be able to handle it. Because another thing I've realized in life, we can handle different things. Like, my best friend lost her mom. I probably would have took me out, you know? Um, and I don't know, maybe her not being able to have kids could have t- took her out. And then I have another friend whose dad wasn't there. That would have took me out. Um, but again, maybe her going through what I'm going through would t- take her out. So you see, we all are different. Like, God really looked at us and was like, okay, you can't take losing a mom. So I'm going to give it to her. But And she can't take not having kids, so I'm going to give it to you. It's like he knew exactly what to give us. And I had to tell myself, like, this isn't, this isn't a defeat. This is an obstacle for me to overcome. All the tools have been given to me. I just need to do what I need to do to overcome. Uh, y'all, I have all the pills, all the everything. Just It's going to be consistency for me and patience, which, you know, maybe this was the way that God had to give it to me to overcome those two things, consistency and patience. Um, but I know I'm going to have this amazing testimony. I'm going to be able to share it with so women all over the world. I'm so thankful to be a, a, a part of this tribe because I, I know a lot of women could not handle it. And, you know, God saw fit that I could not only handle it but overcome. And although it seems like it's going to take me out at times, it's really seeing my family in my mind because I'm very futuristic seeing it but not being there so it's almost like having a million dollars in the bank but you know it's christmas and you can't touch it till after holidays or it's new year's eve and you can't touch it till after holidays or you know you won the lottery and you gotta wait to drive to you know go pick it up from tallahassee just like uh, just like the excitement of knowing that some you're going to be an amazing mom, amazing wife, da, 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 and having all that energy and that love, but not being able to express it yet. It's just, I don't know. I don't know what name to give to it, but maybe anxiety is the best thing. So just listen to these ladies because they could probably explain it a lot better than me. So it's not really the infertility itself. Yes, I do have grief for the the children that I lost and I wonder you know where what would my life look like if they were here mom of three what would that look like um so you're like kind of mourning the things that you're you know you won't be able to do with those angel babies but it's also wanting to celebrate what the future holds but not knowing how long that's going to take and just being in the now And so I'm going to just continue to create and focus on other things because being a mom is basically creativity. You you can create things. That's what being a mom is, not just creating a child. So I'm going to continue to create my eBooks and my businesses and podcasts and we'll see what the future holds. Um, So I'm going to uh, let you guys hear the other two ladies. And then I will come back and then we can start part two. There's no one way to be pregnant. I'm Andrea Sirtash, and this is Pregnantish. My pregnancy journey wasn't traditional. I went through nearly a decade of emotional, financial, and physical ups and downs trying to get or stay pregnant, going through cycle after cycle of IVF surgery and surrogacies. With a little help from my cousin and her uterus, I'm now a mother to a baby who was waiting for a healthy carrier since 2016. I know modern family planning. The people like me with unconventional paths to parenthood are often left in the dark. Pregnantish is here to tell their stories, stranger than fiction stories, yearning to be told. Honestly, there are women who reach out to me on Facebook all the time who I barely know. I think that that's one of the things that a lot of women struggling with this want to talk to somebody, but they don't know anybody who's completely open. 
Everything about reproduction is changing. The technology and attitude around it are evolving. Things like egg freezing, IVF, and surrogacy used to be looked at with shame, but today, they're totally normal, even celebrated. The narrative has changed a little bit, you know, in, say, in the last 10 years. Right now, it's perceived as something really positive and empowering, and it, there's a real go-girl attitude about it. I mean, I'm 34 years old. <laughs> I'm not, you know, 58, right? It's changing the lives of ourselves and our families for the better. So if the sperm donor were listening to this interview, what would you tell him about his biological son? Well, for one, I'm super grateful um, that he made that choice. Our pregnancy journeys are all different, but when we bring these untold stories to light, we find there's a tie that binds them all. You don't have to be totally open like I was, um, but also remember that people love you and want to help you and want to be there for you. However you approach it is perfect. Pregnantish. Coming to Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. mind when you see these words. Spinster, career woman, crazy cat lady, hag, witch. All of these are terms used sometimes for childless women. Hello, my name is Jodie Day and I'm a childless woman. And I'd like to introduce you to my tribe, those one in five women without children, hidden in plain sight all around you. Probably a larger number than you realised, isn't it? You see, because misrepresented in the media, in politics, in marketing, in social and healthcare policy, we don't really register on most people's radar unless you're either one of us or very close to one of us. Well, maybe you're thinking, gosh, with everything that's going on in the world today, this is pretty trivial stuff, really. <coughs> but I'd like to show you that it matters because my tribe has a gift that we'd like to offer you that, if you had the courage to accept it, could play a crucial role in creating a kinder and more sustainable world. This tribe has always been amongst us, but what's different about it now are the numbers. One in five women like me, born in the 1960s, turned 45 without having had children. That's double what it was for our mother's generation. It's up to one in four as what we consider the more family-oriented cultures like Ireland and Italy and even macho Australia. Up to one in three in Germany and Japan. And if my inbox is anything to go by, it'll be up to one in four in the UK for those born in the 1970s. Now, whilst these numbers don't give us any qualitative information about why a woman might not have children, a 2010 meta-analysis by Dutch academic Professor Renske Kaiser would suggest that 10% of women who are childless are child-free, having chosen not to become mothers, and 10% are childless for medical reasons, including infertility. So that leaves a whopping 80% of women without children, childless by circumstance, with those circumstances varying widely, but often featuring the absence of a willing or suitable partner during our fertile years, or even an unsuitable partner. <laughs> the last time that childlessness stood at one in five or 20% was for those women born around 1900, and who remained childless for two main reasons. Firstly, because so many of them lost their current or future partners in the trenches, and secondly, because many couples couldn't afford to marry or have children because of the Great Depression. When you consider that it took the war with the greatest combat losses we've known, and the greatest global depression we've ever seen so far to create these numbers before, can you begin to sense the magnitude of the social change that we're living through? But let's just take a step back a moment to the day that I joined this tribe. It was a gloomy February afternoon in the grotty studio flat I'd moved into after the stormy and distressing breakup of my last chance to have a baby relationship. I was standing by the window watching the rain make dusty tracks down the glass, when the traffic in the street below seemed to go quiet, 
almost as if I put it on mute. And then it came to me. It's over. I'm never going to have a baby. I realized that my 15-year journey towards motherhood, including spending my entire 30s stuffing 50-pound notes into the hands of any alternative fertility guru who said they could help me and my then-husband conceive, were over. I realized that I could no longer think of myself as someone who was one day going to become a mother. I was childless. I was one of those childless women. This moment is forever tattooed on my heart because it marked the beginning into a profound pit of grief. A pit so deep, I didn't know if I'd make it out again. It would have helped if I'd known it was grief, or if the doctors and therapists I consulted about my life-wrecking distress had known, but they didn't. You see, my tribe exists in a huge cultural blind spot, and many professionals miss it too. Grief is a language that this lost tribe speaks fluently but which our society is deaf to. Now, perhaps you're thinking, well, it can't really be grief because you didn't actually lose anything. This is a very common assumption and one that many of us share too as we trudge through lost years, lost decades of our lives even. Because you see, childlessness is a form of disenfranchised grief, a grief that we're not allowed to experience, not allowed to talk about. Or maybe you're thinking, ah, actually, this is all a bit melodramatic, Jodie, surely it's not that bad. Let me just share with you just a few of the things we've lost. That not only will we never have children, but we'll never create our own family. We'll never be able to correct the wrongs of our own childhood by doing things differently with our kids. We'll never watch them grow up, never hold their hot little hand in ours, never throw children's birthday parties, Never take that first day at school photo. We'll never see them maybe grow up, graduate, get married and have their own kids. We'll never be grandmothers and never give the gift of grandchildren to our parents. We'll never stand shoulder to shoulder with our siblings and watch our children play together. We'll never be the mother of our partner's children and hold that precious place in their heart. We'll never be part of the community of mothers in a society, and never be considered a real woman in a society that equates motherhood with womanhood. And as we grow old, we can't hope that someone will be there to support us with the emotional, practical challenges of ageing, let alone someone to leave our treasured possessions to, <coughs> someone to take our lifetime's into the next generation, someone to visit our grave. My loss may be invisible to you, but I stand here today astonished that I survived the initiation rite it took to join this tribe. And the reason I absolutely had to seek them out was because of bingo. Yeah, you see, because when we do try to talk to you, often what we hear back are bingos. And the reason we call them this is because on a really bad day, you can get a full house. Here are just a few of them, and what we're really thinking as you trot them out. Well, you can always just adopt. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Actually, as a middle-aged, single, self-employed woman without savings or my own home, my chances were pretty zilch, actually. And even if I had been able to, today's adopted kids arrive from their rocky starts in life pretty traumatised and about as far from little orphan Annie as you can imagine. And anyway, these are vulnerable human lives we're talking about, not some booby prize for childlessness. And anyway, there's the thing that becoming an adoptive parent was never my dream. I wanted to be a biological one, just like you did. Well, I guess if you'd really wanted children, you would have tried harder. Coming from someone who just got knocked up on honeymoon, this is beyond insensitive. <laughs> if you'd heard the heartbreaking stories I'd heard of multiple miscarriages, multiple failed IVF treatments costing more than six figures, of ethically refraining from getting whoops pregnant, of long-term singleness whilst waiting for a partner grown up enough to even consider parenthood with, of fertility robbed by illnesses, genetic inheritances, and family traumas, of failed surrogacies, 
failed adoptions, stillbirths, and countless other losses that could make you weep for years. There are many ways not to become a mother, and very few of them include not trying hard enough. But I read this article. Okay. <laughs> Whatever miracle baby story you've read in the Daily Mail this week, <laughs> could I just suggest that the reason it's there is because it's news? IVF had a global failure rate of 77% in 2012. And most women and couples who go into fertility treats, including those in their 20s, come out without a baby. It's frontier science, and it's still evolving. But you're so lucky you don't have kids. You get to sleep in and travel. <laughs> so you'd trade your kids in for that, would you? Mm -hmm. The thing is, you may look at our lives and think that they're like your lives, but with more freedom and cleaner furniture. But what you can't see is our grief and an existential dark night of the soul that would make standing barefoot on Lego quite appealing. Mm -hmm. And anyway, when I do go travelling, I have to say, it doesn't seem to be holding a lot of families back. <laughs> oh, kids, more trouble than they're worth. Have one of mine. Fine. I'll be round on Wednesday to pick up the one with brown hair. <laughs> Can you imagine if you were to try to talk to someone about the death of your parents and they said this? Parents, more trouble than they're worth. You're lucky yours are dead. <laughs> exactly. What all of these bingos point to is a refusal to accept the reality of our situation and the pain that we're in. That the unspoken message that we hear is, will you please shut up about your childlessness and go away and fix it? Well, some things aren't fixable. And I think in our society, we're really uncomfortable with unfixable things. We prefer to believe that if you have enough data, make smart decisions, throw enough cash and a really positive attitude at it, anything can be solved. If you take a moment to think of all that has changed for women in my lifetime, the introduction of the pill, legalised and safe abortion, women's access to higher education, women's access to the professions and fertility treatments, all in one generation. I call us the shock absorber generation for the sexual revolution. This has completely changed the dating and mating landscape, yet our social mores have not yet caught up. The pressure on modern women to get all their ducks in a row and get an education, an income, a home, a stable partnership, and a kid or two by the time they're in their late 30s is enormous. Yet there is no recognition of how hard this can be because of societal and structural issues. Whilst it is now expected that all women will work and support themselves, we have joined a professional workplace that grew up around the male pattern of fertility, going to university in your teens, starting your career in your mid-twenties, working your ass off till your mid-thirties before settling down and having a family. But female fertility starts declining around 28 and falls off a cliff at 35, just at the point when many women and couples are just about stable enough economically to consider having a family. And that's if you have a partner to have children with. I think that perhaps there can be parallels between my tribe's desire to be recognised by society and that of the gay liberation movement of the last 50 years. Whilst we still have a long way to go in terms of recognising the wide range of human sexualities, there are now laws to protect the rights of LGBT individuals, and no self-respecting HR department would neglect to include them in their diversity planning. Yet I don't know of a single organisation that considers the needs and issues of women without children in the workplace. And this is not about the numbers. About 10% of people identify as LGBT. Women without children are double that and rising. This invisibility shows up in the way that organisations routinely conflate female-friendly policies with family-friendly policies in the way that we are expected to uncomplainingly pick up the slack for our colleagues on maternity leave or with childcare issues. Yet, if we expect reciprocity, compensation, or even recognition for this, or perhaps have the temerity to suggest that maybe we too deserve to spend Christmas with our loved ones, 
we are seen as unsisterly and difficult. In the way that political rhetoric rarely strays from addressing hard-working families, entirely ignoring the many who contribute their taxes to sustain our civil society for everyone's use. In the way that granny is used as a generic term for elderly women, and the way the government keeps banging on about how families need to do more to support our ageing population, entirely ignoring that by 2030 there will be 2 million people aged over 65 in the UK without adult children. It happens behind closed doors too when childless daughters are ignored in family discussions about wills and inheritances and you'd be surprised how often she's given the sofa to sleep and not expected to mind about it whilst her sister's kids get her bedroom. It even happens to few who can forget Andrea Leedson's gaffe that being a mother gave her a more tangible stake in the future than her childless rival, Theresa May? <coughs> there are one and a half million women like me in our 40s and 50s in the UK without children, perhaps as many as 90% of us not by choice. The dark night of the soul that we've been through and the courage that it takes to hold our heads up high despite the shaming, othering and devaluing we experience privately and publicly on a daily basis has given us a gift we'd like to offer back to you. The gift of grief. Grief alchemically transforms the devastation of loss into an unsentimental ability to face reality, to accept life on its terms, not ours. Yet we are a grief-phobic society and often see grief as something awkward and self-indulgent to be got over as quickly as possible. But grief is the emotion that enables us to deal with devastating loss, with irrevocable change. The biggest change that we're collectively in denial about right now is that our planet is dying on our watch and with it our cherished beliefs that we can carry on with business as usual. Without feeling our very real grief for the earth and working through the fear, pain and sadness that are a natural part of coming to terms with loss, the consequences could be catastrophic. After all, every other civilization on this planet ends because of resource depletion. My hope is that by accepting this gift of grief, you will realize that perhaps the reason you have banished us from your awareness is because our loss reminds you of your ungrieved losses and that in touch with those, you will choose to be more tender with us, more tender with yourself, and with everyone who grieves, and that together, we can begin to create a more emotionally robust society, one better equipped to face the very real challenges ahead, the challenges that everyone else's children, except ours, is going to inherit. I'm pretty sure any woman or any men too, they just don't get it as bad as we do, I don't think. But like any person who has to deal with what, you know, some women have to deal with with infertility, hate those questions. Like it's one of them things where like, you know that it's not coming from a messed up place when people ask you those questions. You know it's not coming from a place where like, oh, I want to. I know this person is having troubles. Let me just, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's some people like that. But for the most part, people who ask those type of questions, they're not, it doesn't come from an ill place, but it's still hurtful. Like some of the questions on here are like, um, are you pregnant yet? Um, uh, don't wait till it's too late or hurry up, get your husband a kid before he starts wandering. First of all, that one is, you out of line with that question because, I mean, nobody ever said that to me, but if somebody ever been asked that question, like whoever asking that is just completely out of line. That's just, no. But um, I feel like I've gotten a lot of pressure on my uterus. Like there's been a lot, of, a lot of pressure on me and my uterus more than I can imagine any baby putting pressure on my uterus. Like, mainly from his family, like his family, will, like his mom or like, oh, I'm ready for y'all to have a kid. And it's like the questions. And then 
before you knew it, everybody in his family started having kids, like literally back to back. Like he has so many nieces and nephews, like literally born every year. Every year somebody's pregnant. It's like, it's so many of them. It's at least 10 of them all together. And they're all between the ages of seven on down. Like, so to, like they just been popping them out. So we are the couple that's been together this long. All of those siblings and stuff, they're not even together with their spouses anymore. They not even they haven't even been with their spouse that long. And then you have us, the people who've been together this whole time and watched like all of this manifest in front of us. And so you know it's a lot of pressure on us because we the couple who've just been been together the longest. And it's a lot. It's a lot. And how do you answer it? Like what what do you say when people say that? It's like, oh, not yet, especially in the first couple of years, when people asking you that, it's like, oh, not yet, not yet, not yet. At first. That's what I was saying until I started to like question, like, wait, why am I not getting pregnant? And then I started like, you know, went to like a specialist and yeah, I, 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 that's what I say now, Danny. I say, I tell him that it's on God's time because now I know more about it. But before, like in the beginning, I would say stuff like, oh, not yet, not yet. You know, we having fun, you know, we, whatever, whatever. But as time started to go on, I started to question it. In the beginning, I didn't really think much of it. But as time started to go on, I'm like, damn. So I, you know, went, got some, um, yeah, I know what the, and, and he's the only sibling in his family. And they are a small family. So I know, like, what you, you know, experiencing. So, you know, once I got clarity of what's going on, I'm like, okay, so I started to move different and and understand stuff a bit different, but it started to frustrate me. Like I see people in like different groups and they say like they hate going to baby showers and I under they hate going to baby showers, baby parties, like any any type of event, like especially when you've been dealing with it for as long as some people like myself have. Um is it's rough and some people don't get it. Like if I don't show up to your baby party, like maybe I just wasn't in the mood to get there and then have to hear when y'all do like when when y'all turn. Oh, it's y'all turn now. Oh, I, I don't have time for those questions. Like I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to have to fake smile. Like really, I want to cry. Like, can you stop asking me? Because I don't have the answer. I genuinely don't have the answer. So it's like um I just it was one of the things where like you you just be resilient about it and you just you know whatever but I'm human too at the end of the day so like I be I don't be feeling it so sometimes I'll just like not go I'll stop showing up to stuff and people don't understand when you not showing up oh they acting funny or whatever I don't have to explain every detail of my life and why I can't do something you said <sighs> Yeah, nobody asks for this. Nobody trust me, nobody asks for this. You know what I mean? But it's one of those things where like where like you you deal with whatever you dealt. Like you play your cards the best you the best you can because it just is what it is. I don't know if y'all watch um The Real. Y'all saw the real, y'all saw uh Jeannie Mai, you know, having her baby uh with Jeezy or not having her baby, but she's announced that she's pregnant with Jeezy. And for anybody who follows that show, uh, what's her name? Adrian from 3LW, the Cheetah Girls or whichever one it is. She has been struggling with infertility for so long. And she's so beautiful, for one. And for two, she is just always smiling and happy. Like, she had to sit through Tamara. Um... She had to sit through Tamara having her two children. She had to sit through Tamar having her baby. And now the one who never, uh, Jeannie, who never even wanted children, ever, is now pregnant because she was just, she changed her mind, which she has a right. But I'm just saying, like, for the people who genuinely wanted, like, I wanted this this whole time, this whole time. And now, and she never wanted this. Now she just changed her mind and she gets it. And here I am. I have to congratulate her when deep down inside, she's not going to say this, but only people who go through 
who's going through, you know, who is experiencing what she's experiencing um, would understand. Like she stays quiet and she smiles and she congratulates, but like I've seen her, she's done so much, like changing her diet, and getting married, giving her life to God, praying with her husband, just doing everything um, and her husband as well and seeing all type of doctors. And then she's still struggling. I think it's a problem with her eggs. I'm not sure. Um, but that resilience that you sh just show, the point of that story was because some women just show like, you you really don't know what somebody's going through until they say it. We would never know that she was trying for a baby. Like as beautiful as she is, you think, you know, she got herself, she got her, her stuff together. You just think that oh, she just decided not to have children, you know, but with her speaking out and saying something about it, it's like, damn, to sit there and watch her congratulate everybody through everything and she's just struggling. I know it feels crazy. Like, I know it feels crazy to her. It feels crazy to me. It feels crazy to y'all. Some women already have kids and I want to speak about that for the women who have children. Um, you know, a lot of people like to denounce y'all feelings and say, well, you already got one. You already got one, whatever. Like at the end of the day, if you want to have another one, you want to give your child a sibling and you cannot. First of all, your God given right. Like we were born to reproduce. So like, it doesn't matter if I had one, if I had two, whatever. I mean, you obviously have something to be grateful for because you already have some, but to, I hate when I see people try to denounce y'all for that, you know, but people like myself who don't have any, like it's rough. It's so rough. And I just was talking to my boyfriend's sister literally yesterday. Like we were outside talking and she was just saying how it's not in her family. Like everybody has kids and like what we're going through is new to her because they never had to experience anything like this. And to see us going through this for this long, like it's just, it's different. It's not something that she's used to. And, you know, they have all had miscarriages, but they turned around and had a baby. But here we are, we're eight years in a relationship trying for majority of the eight, unintentionally trying in the beginning, but still it was unprotected and it could have happened and it should have happened still. Um, but over eight years, like nothing happens. It's like, of course, everybody's looking at you, you know, a ninth pregnancy is like, God bless you. <laughs> like, God bless you. Had Like we, we want to be able to have as many as we would desire. And for the women who don't want to have any, like that's their choice. You know, everybody has, everybody should be, I just wish that it was a way that everybody could just do what they wanted to do. If you want to have children, you can have them. If you don't want them, you, then you don't have to have them. Then there's those people who never wanted children. Then they pop up pregnant. And it's like, Oh crap. Like I never wanted this. Then you got people who's trying so hard and it's like, damn, it's still not happening. So it's crazy just the way stuff works. Like what you say. Um, Thanks a million for listening. There's a million podcasts in the world. You clicked on this one, little old this one to hear what I have to say. I hope Universe has a special message for you. You can reach me on Linktree at forward slash love got me. Hope you have a better than a great day. Love ya. Talk to you later. Bye. You all can't give us young people for hope. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. And yet, I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. And all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you?